Hello, my name's Steve and welcome to the Seaside Allotment Channel. And today we're going to do a tour of the three plots. We're almost finished planting for winter now and spring, but not quite. So I'll show you uh, how we're progressing and I think we'll start in the greenhouse. So as we go round you will see quite a lot of empty beds and this is what's going in them. And it's quite a nice selection. We've got some lettuces, some sorrel, some uh, radicchio, more lettuces, more lettuces, winter miners lettuce, um, uh, bull's blood beetroot, shard, uh, what's that, rocket, a bit more shard, Chinese cabbages, more lettuces, lettuces, lettuces. Uh, it's kind of interesting. Look, these are the uh, ones that were planted in the dodgy compost, and they basically have done absolutely nothing. They've just not grown. Um, and when I transplanted them, that's what happened. So that's the greenhouse. Okay, here's a quick overview of the plot. And this row of beds is all pretty much ready for harvesting. So we've got leeks here, a few straggly carrots, sweet potatoes under there, lettuces that are just going to be picked over the next couple of weeks, uh, shard and bull's blood beetroot. They will um, last over winter in there. Some lovely spring onions in there and a bed that's just ready for planting. More lettuces that are just finishing and more lettuces that are just finishing. A lot of some spinach, lettuces that are just finishing. So quite a lot of beds that are ready for planting there. And then most of these beds are planted up. So we've got some lovely lettuces all planted up there. We've got some red cabbage. And these are a bit behind because of the uh, challenges with that dodgy compost um, and as a result they're in the cold frame and we'll see how well they catch up. Rocket, more spinach, salads, radishes and radicchio and these radicchio are doing really nicely they're starting to uh, heart up now and they're doing very well in this little hoop tunnel. And I'll show you some that I planted at the same time outside uh, for comparison. I've just taken all the outer leaves off now. They tend to rot as an example there. We've got that in mist. And uh, so, tend to rot and attract slugs. So I'm just leaving a few outer leaves on like this one here. Um, but as soon as they start to form a heart, like that, then I'll take the outer leaves off. And I've got some, another lovely lettuce bed. Almost ready to take the asparagus out. I really want to take it out now because it does cast a bit of shade, but um, apparently you're meant to leave it in until the last minute. Well, not the last minute, until after the frost has killed it, knocked it back. Spinach bed, very tiny. And uh, these were grown in the dodgy compost, but no doubt they will pick up. And it doesn't really matter anyway because they're in here for spring. Got another empty bed here, and then some more lettuces. Lost a few there, so there's a few gaps being filled. What else have we got? So, lots of spring onions in here on quite nicely. A new batch in there, some Chinese cabbage at the back and then in here more lettuces and just the last of the beetroot. Not quite the size I want it. I just want it a few grow, let it grow for another two or three weeks and then this bed will get planted up uh, with salads uh, for spring. Shard bed's looking really nice. Cover will go on there soon. Here's the radicchio that I was talking about. 
miles behind the stuff in the little hoop tunnel and already you might be able to see some rotting on these leaves and uh, this is what happens unfortunately when it's left outside and uh, especially here because it's underneath this giant tree so they get lots of dripping water and leaves and stuff but some nice spring onions there this is my odds and sods brassica bed we'll see the main brassica bed in a minute but some really nice uh, broccolini here um, so this is like a calabrese but it's just lots and lots of little side shoots really with a, a very small centre head but uh, you get loads more side shoots than you do on a, tropical, a traditional uh, calabrese and I really like it, it's been really prolific a few uh, sprouts and kales, cabbages all sorts of bits and pieces basically that uh, I just uh, couldn't squeeze in anywhere else bean frame served me well but it's coming out next week probably and this is going to be a strawberry bed and I'm going to do something different next year with the beans so I'll show you that another day raspberries coming to the an end here more salads looking very nice and batch of carrots here excellent black carrots those are lovely and sweet and we've also got some very nice radishes I do love radishes at this time of year I don't even bother growing them in the summer because they're just so superior in the cool weather I can hardly bear to eat them and some nice uh, salads there salanova reds don't grow very high uh, so they'll just be lovely in there and a few more salads and the uh, New Zealand spinach still fantastic here all the way down here are my um, strawberry plants and uh, these are all earlies which will be going in the polytunnel February time cabbages January King with spring onions all the way down the sides and sprouts now <laughs> these are little clumps of sprouts there's two or three sprouts in a clump which you might think is absolute crazy and I think it's kind of crazy as well but actually I love sprout leaves and so I'm not growing these for the sprouts I'm growing them for the sprout tops and sprout leaves so wish me luck okay some perpetual kale and some rocket really should clear that bed but actually I really like the perpetual kale so I think I'll leave it and uh, what else have we got oh here we go we've got these are strawberry runners posted up those will be going where my bean frame is so here's a quick look at my uh, winter carrot bed on the allotment it's coming on nicely these are not very big at the moment about five inches but uh, we've got some uh, really lovely ones at home as well and so we're leaving these for as long as possible into winter and then we've got some more golden beetroot almost all of our golden beetroot well almost all of our beetroots in store now we've got some nice uh, sized roots though and uh, these are gonna serve as well and probably this will keep us going this bed until maybe close to christmas time and uh, then we'll switch over to the stuff that's in the storeroom and um, we've also got some cylindra here um, and we've got loads of cylinder in store as well so uh, we're definitely not going to run out of beetroot all the compost bins are full absolutely filled to the brim so I am well set up these are full as well let's take a look at the polytunnel so lots of experiments going on in here so I've got potatoes 
Christmas potatoes in theory they're actually doing pretty well but they're very very leggy so they're kind of stuffed in the corner there we'll see how they get on this is my late crop of sweet corn not many cobs obviously but uh, it's actually doing really nicely starting to firm up now I think we're only a month away so I'm hopeful that we'll actually get a really late crop and Debbie loves sweet corn so it's all for her these are my late uh, tomatoes I've got even later ones which are in the conservatory at home these are actually doing pretty good so I'm quite pleased with them lots of flowers on them we'll see how they get on I've got some cabbages in here in the polytunnel and the only real well there's two reasons they're in here one is they run in late so <coughs> sorry, trying to speed them up second reason is I just want a nice mix of stuff in the polytunnel because this is my first year growing in the polytunnel I want to try all sorts of different things out see what works see what doesn't and so lots of winter brassicas in here you can see stacks and stacks of tomatoes and they're still ripening really nicely um, so for now I'm leaving these plants in but uh, yeah really loving these tomatoes and loads and loads of cucumbers everywhere I look I've got cucumbers I have to take some plants out but basically stacks of cucumbers beans are finished no more flowers so I can't really say that these late runner beans worked very well did get a nice crop off them but then I slide a few outside as well um, I'm going to cut those back and I'm going to leave the plants in that tub see if I can get some early um, runner beans next year more beautiful tomatoes and more on potatoes more potatoes more potatoes just everywhere and quite a few cucumbers and loads more coming so what else have we got spring onions carrots more brassicas i think these are our cauliflower and this is one of those um late tomato plants and you can see it's doing quite nicely and i've got some more brassicas here these are brassicas that i am overwintering to plant in early very early spring for a very early crop of calabrese and cauliflower and cabbage and I've started clearing these beds here and planting up some lettuces and they're not looking bad and they're all interplanted with spring onions and then down here more calabrese not calabrese just more cauliflower I think these are and some more lettuces so not too bad Let's go take a look at yeah, Jenny's we've plot. We've just done stacks of work on Jenny's plot. We've done loads of harvesting, taken all the nets off the brassicas, found some nasty surprises, but generally I think we survived. So let's have a look around. Okay, we'll start with the apples. So we've harvested all of this tree. Loads of it has been dehydrated. Lots of them have been eaten. This is our best late apple tree. Uh, there's a lovely crop on here no grubs perfect condition uh, well dehydrating about a third of these and eating the rest and I've got some golden delicious here which are also really lovely but they're they're nice now but they're a late uh, fairly late apple so we're leaving them on the tree as long as possible and this is a discovery there's two varieties of apple on the same tree here and of course those have all been eaten leeks are doing okay looking a bit shabby a little bit of rust and this was the potato bed and it's all harvested now and all stored away we picked an absolute stack of potatoes here easily enough for us uh, well definitely until uh, we're harvesting potatoes again next year so we've got absolutely no shortage 
and we've still got quite a few in the ground in pots at home so pretty good i've planted this whole bed here with field beans to uh, enrich the soil with nitrogen the uh, roots will be left in the tops will be composted these are my late broad beans and they're doing very very nicely it's really nice to have some broad beans at this time of year we've harvested stacks of them um, and you can see still quite a nice uh, harvest on there little tiny bit of uh, chocolate spot I think on here but doesn't harm the beans so no problem at all brassica bed this is looking excellent I'm really pleased with this just picked a cauliflower out of here a couple of days ago and we've got some obviously some kale down here Colette's here got a little bit eaten as you can see here when we took the covers off we found loads of caterpillars that is one of the problems with the kind of opaque cover you don't see what's going on until it's too late unless you check in every day and we don't check every day on this plot but um, they'll all recover I am not worried at all and you can see cauliflower here that also got a little bit eaten um, calabrese here and here come all of the purple sprouting broccoli so all of this row down here are all Rudolph so they start about now we've had some of this already um, and they'll last through sort of February March time and then we switch over to these and I can never remember the name of them but they're absolutely fantastic and very prolific in March April time so basically a nice little succession of those and we have finally started chipping away at this lawn area lawn area is here for Jenny's little boy to play on but we decided that that little center area there is plenty for playing and entertaining and so we've put two big strawberry beds in so we're going to plant those up in October and we've also got some blueberries which hopefully we're going to get sunk into this little flower bed here and so Robin little boy is going to be surrounded by fruit he's got currants and raspberries over there he's got strawberries and blueberries here so it should be fantastic another brassica bed here absolutely decimated by whitefly but I think it might pull through so we've got kale all the way down here all different types some January King cabbages here some more kale 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 collets and these are the collets and they're like little clumps of kale they grow a bit bigger than this obviously it's too early uh, really for them but uh, all of these plants they look kind of crazy like some sort of forest um, but they've got enough green uh, enough leaves uh, at the top and they'll be just fine and the stems are clear and all the way down these stems there will be collets and uh, we're gonna have a fabulous harvest if it all comes off the way we're hoping and I absolutely love collets they are my absolute favorite brassica without a doubt and then this was my incredibly embarrassing harvest of squash absolutely just ridiculously terrible um, so I set myself a challenge of doing a better job next year and pretty soon here and here there will go broad beans and then all the way down here is the garlic and overwintered onions and elephant garlic and then this area here kind of from about there to the end are the summer onions um, and well spring planted onions 
and we'll also have some of those on my plot in one of those big beds um, what else oh yes in these strawberry beds we are interplanting the strawberries with garlic and elephant garlic so we've got three of these big strawberry beds one on my plot two here and so we've got loads and loads of garlic to go in there so it's pretty exciting tried it last year worked really well and garlic just takes up such a lot of space for such a long time so it's kind of nice to uh, be using that space for something else and I'll just jump across here and just show you these really terrible plants these are summer purple broccoli and they should have been taken out a long time ago but what we found last year was that they just put on some lovely leaf growth at this time of year you can see uh, we absolutely love these leaves so we leave the plants in because although the actual purple sprouting broccoli on them is rubbish um, yeah the leaves are really good so as you can see we're big big fans of leafy greens in theory now we'll go to Debbie's plot but uh, it's such a racket somebody's strimming away and it's pretty much next to Debbie's plot so it'll have to be a bit later on plot. I thought I'd just show you this this is a new tree that we put in this year and it's a Braben Braben's my favourite apple pretty much and uh, just look at that harvest I mean they're little obviously but uh, I'm so excited for next year so yeah we'll see how that goes so the strimmer's finally finished so uh, I'm going to take a look at Debbie's plot uh, she's been working hard clearing it and uh, she's not quite finished yet but it's looking pretty good so there's an overview of the plot she's got these giant kale plants and uh, they're not too bad really because you only take these top leaves and uh, they're really nice so uh, you don't take these lower down ones they're really tough but uh, top ones good so still worth leaving in strawberry plants interplanted with garlic collets here more collets all around here this is the herb bed it's looking pretty good some more New Zealand spinach it's not done as well as it did on my plot maybe um, gets a bit of shade perhaps from all these beans new herb bed that she's just finished planting kale and collets we've been picking this kale really hard and uh, now that we've got some good stuff on Jenny's plot we can let that grow on a bit more broccoli this is the uh, March April variety interplanted with some nice flowers these are our runner beans or one of the two beds of runner beans we're just leaving those on uh, for next year's seed all sorts of berries down here I forget what this one is but we haven't had anything off it yet there's one little berry there look but, uh, oh, there's a few more down there we're really looking forward to these because goji berries that's right goji berries some more broccoli down here raspberries currants more currants we're going to grow some mini kiwi over this uh, arch here so i'm quite excited to try those more strawberries and garlic down here and then a few trees this little pear tree has been fantastic oh there's one pear left on there I wonder if Debbie realised that was still there look at that oh, beauty and that we're eating those fresh and we're also dehydrating those and then blackberries all the way along the back here some of them have got thorns unfortunately and uh, perpetual strawberries in here look at that I just love these perpetual strawberries gorgeous 
There's another one now. Keep going down there for ages. Brilliant. Oh my goodness, look at all those down there. Anyway, let's not get distracted. Um, what else have we got? Apples, really all the apples down here as well. And these, Jonah Gold, really lovely. Another herb bed down here. Lots of apples down here. And the last of Debbie's sweet corn. And more apples. So I think with that, we'll probably call it a day. I'll pop a few photos of recent harvests and things on the back of this, and I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.